Hi guys, welcome back. So in this lesson, I just wanted to share or talk about the importance of dynamics in music. Okay, we use this word sometimes loosely. I think, uh, you know, if you if you are a physics student, I think it kind of means some form of change, some physical quantity changing over time. So in other words, if you measure anything like let's say temperature or you know, the number of coronavirus cases, which is the most popular graph in the past few years. Uh, basically, you're measuring what is happening over the x-axis, which is time. And music is a very time-driven art form, right? It's not a static art form like, like painting, for example, where you just have it in front of you. Yes, you can imagine things around it, but uh, actually, it's just a static art form. Music is dynamic, so everything changes your emotions change and it's more like you're telling stories using the audio medium or the oral medium uh, rather than the visual medium so when creating music using dynamics we need to keep a few things in mind and this would be applicable to you whether you're an absolute beginner or whether you're an absolute pro advanced seasoned musician i think these points hold good for all okay and we just we just need to look at the physical quantities of music which are available and then learn how to tweak them, learn how to manage them and more importantly control them with pretty much anything we do on the instrument. Whether it's play melodies, whether it's accompanying a singer, whether it's following a drummer, anything. And a lot about dynamics is about either you imagining the music, imagining the story it's telling and imagining the purpose of what you're doing. And uh, also another reason why you would need dynamics is to serve your band members or to serve the musicians you're playing. Uh, for example, to follow the singer's dynamics. Sometimes we look out for singers because of how, uh, how, how obvious their dynamics is. Sometimes their lyrics itself would mean, okay, you have some sad sentence. So you have to play the piano in a very kind of sad, melancholic way. Or if it's more uh, ch chirpy or a bit more uplifting, you have to bring up the flavor on the piano. Another great way to look at dynamics is to follow the intensity of the drummer right if the drummer is sort of belting it or slamming it you need to be with the drummer or follow or combat or uh, work with the drummer to bring out or, or to make the drums sound better sometimes a little bit of what we do should make our fellow musicians also sound better so a good gig which you might perform would be a gig where you you just make the singer sound better or you make the drummer sound better and if the singer sounds better the show is a success if the drummer sounds better everyone dances right so there's no harm in kind of staying behind the scenes sometimes and exploring dynamics so dynamics could be used in a visual story like context where you are imagining a story or you're trying to work with an existing story by let's say your mu music director friend who works with you uh, or you're just playing with the art form which is a dynamic art form you want to say okay there is a hero, there is a hero going through all these stages in the movement or in the story or in the journey and your music needs to support that, right? Uh, yes, and also dynamics is important to follow your bandmates or your singer or your choir or the overall objective of the arrangement of the song, right? So coming to all the properties which we can change on the piano or pretty much on any musical instrument is volume. The volume component is the simplest thing which you can kind of float and change and really bring out the art form, right? So if I take a simple phrase like this. Right, this is at the upper volume you know, spectra. So instead of that, maybe play it softer. Why not combine the two? Reach a kind of a crescendo or or a decrescendo where you're kind of climbing down.
right and a lot about playing dynamics is also working from within your body what you have within you what you clearly know you have is breathing right so if you can time your dynamics or time your performance with your breathing it kind of helps it's worked with a ton of my students and it's obviously worked for me to play something like this and breathe so just focus on your breathing you know so what happened there i just took a, a deep breath inside and the volume just became louder and then i couldn't breathe any more so the volume kind of stayed where it was right come down rest so i've taken a breath out right so time your dynamics time your performance with your breathing okay the volume is what we've been chatting about now volume is the most organic way or the easiest way for a musician to bring about dynamics which is a change over time and thus creating a more storytelling environment which is what we need for our art form right the other kind of dynamics which you can do on the piano and a lot of instruments uh, would be legato and staccato so if i take music like this just a chord progression you see the smoothness this is what we call as legato where it's connected versus same music but played in a lot more staccato so that means the length of each of what i am doing each note or each chord is trying to be zero so obviously you cannot have zero sustain right uh, you will have to then be very percussion like where it's just like a clap right so there will be some kind of uh, tail some kind of sustain but with staccato one technique which i find on the piano which is very useful is to flick your fingers and create a fist like this okay and or sort of like a recoil when you're you know playing a game of carrom or something you know you get a nice staccato vibe don't go don't like lift your whole shoulder like you're getting some kind of an electric shock or something you don't need to be getting a shock doing this it's just a flick just fl- flick the fingers back towards your palm and you should get a staccato while legato you just go through the motions the natural motion of playing the piano and if you like even more connection or more legato we have the sustain pedal which is there we go so with holding the pedal gives you this sound without the pedal not so much legato right with the pedal more legato and obviously staccato without the pedal and with the flick so so you could have one section of the song which is staccato and then the next section could be legato and then the emotions come through I hope you're feeling the difference in emotions, right? That's the key. And that's the point of dynamics, you know, to to change your mood, change the story, change the landscape, change what your actor is doing in the movie through these simple things, volume so far and then the duration of the notes, legato or staccato. Okay, what's a nice uh, another another great way to build or uh pr- progress with dynamics on the piano i would just say the other quantity of sound we've covered volume we've covered the length of the sound we have not necessarily yet covered the pitch of the sound right so a sound could be very deep or very low or very high so you get a very kind of a thin sound when you go towards the higher registers so this could be more like a melancholic scene where someone has lost a loved one or whatever you know
you'll probably have all these these sort of music played in the higher register but if i go lower and play the same thing this is more like it's a struggle going on right but i i kid you not i'm playing the same music i did not change my notes i did not change my chord i did not change the speed or the rhythm i didn't change anything i think see now just played it lower now you get that epic brave kind of sound or like there's a lot of destruction you know or like the spoils of war or something also with intensity because you can combine volume with pitch remember both the elements of dynamics same music played higher and lot of these things it's like we didn't really do anything we're just playing it lower and then playing it higher you're just leaving it to i would say leaving it to mother nature to just beautify the sound right so as a player you have to showcase these things you have to showcase these kinds of movements right in music right so again dynamics coming back to the definition change over time another final way to talk about dynamics to leave you in this lesson would be what i call as density okay density basically in in physics means something heavier per unit volume a mass per volume right kg per meter cube if i'm not mistaken when i learnt in my engineering courses okay so with musical density you have the same volume which is in this case the beat or the bar the volume is the amount of time what i call is a time container but how much are you squeezing into that container will be your density value what is your density so to give you an example i can play everyone's favorite song so it's just 1 2 3 4 1 so i'm not really going inside the beat so with density we don't really change the melody or the chords or anything we just try and add something deeper what did i do there something has been added right i've added like what what we call as quavers now we can add more making it a 16th note back to a more timid way or a more uplifting way there we go so that's that's how you add density in the same amount of time you add more and more elements right so we've looked at volume control we've looked at pitch control we've looked at duration control legato staccato and finally i i like to leave you with that term musical density right where you add more subdivisions to your performance or explore more subdivisions with your performance and to cap this video off the importance of dynamics is huge for you as a professional musician or an upcoming aspiring musician what you could hope to achieve the way i like to put it for my students is if you have 100 people who are in a kind of a hall or whatever and they are asked to play the same music right i can guarantee you if someone is judging those 100 people and let's say those judges some of them were musicians some of them were not musicians it doesn't matter the top 10 out of that 100 will be the people who play that exercise or that music with dynamics the remaining 90 may show off a bit more they may color it they may really play very very fast they are not going to win the prize the guys who are going to win are the guys who can show off their dynamics right the effort of showcasing the physical changeable quantities of music which is pitch time 
pitch, duration and volume. Length of the note, uh, velocity or the, the attack or the loudness of the note and the where you're playing the notes. And finally, we have density. So if you want to be in that top 10% group of people, play with dynamics. Don't think about the other stuff which everyone t t keep talking about. Let's learn how to play fast. Let's play super, super speed or things like that. You know, those are the things which are quite attractive for a musician, but may not be the things which actually attract your audience or whoever you're playing music for, right? So from the audience point of view, what can they feel? They they are not going to enjoy music played supremely faster. They are not going to enjoy music which has more complicated chords or more complicated things. They may, but they will feel. The thing which they feel will always be dynamics. So you need to also keep it immersed within you and then project it to your audience. I hope you found this uh, talk or this rant about dynamics to be useful and I hope you can apply it in your music. Remember, it is a very, very important tool. It's going to make you pro immediately. You're just going to go from something to a professional player. All you have to do is take the same data you're doing, same music, and add all these dynamic ingredients and start telling even more, uh, you know, rich and beautiful stories along the way. Cheers and catch you in the next one.